hello, it's uh, Stuart on Isla um, doing the final vlog uh, for the Resilience uh, series. So up till this point in the year, we've been managing our stock throughout this very wet winter. So the last update for Fluke is that we fluke dosed our ewes uh, in December. So that was based on uh, taking faecal egg samples once we'd taken the uh, tubs in off the ewes, um, sent that to our local vets. Um, they put it through the FET pack machine, which has gave, given us the results that there was a, um, a fluke, um, a positive fluke test there. So we then dosed accordingly, and then we put the ewes all back out to the hill, and then we will test them again when they come back in February. Um, so we'll bring them back in off the hill in February, take another faecal sample, and then we'll doze according, uh, according to the results of that. The same goes for the cattle. So the cattle, um, we will be bringing through to, to sort out pre-carving. So we'll, we'll give them um, a doze or we'll test in February, the early, early February when we have the cattle through. We'll again send those samples to our local vets, put them through the fact back machine, and then we will uh, doze at the end of February according to the results of that, or not doze according to the results of that. Part of our management on the reserve, we're using the no fence collars. So they're GPS collars that give us a, a location, but also we can um, limit where the cattle are grazing. So we're using it for focusing uh, the grazing for our management of um, chuff, which is the one of the species we're managing for on the reserve and on the farm. Um, so we've got quite large, large compartment areas that need to be um, focused down effectively um, to to make sure that the grazing is done in the right areas, um, so the key habitat areas, um, without actually having a huge cost of fencing um, lots of these areas into smaller compartments. So, so if I start off, um, so first of all, we need to train them to use the collars. So this first field here, I've set up as a as a training field. So within the internal boundary of that purple area. Um, is actually the the fence that the field is in on two sides and then the water uh, of the lock on the other side. So what it means is that they don't actually have um, four virtual fences around them. They only have one virtual fence, so they only have one area to learn from. So as we can see here, the yellow markings, that's places where she's had an audible warning from the collar. And then the red lightning bolt is where she's had a pulse from the collar because the audible warning has been ignored. So what they tend to do is they'll push the boundary, they'll get a, um, an audible warning, and then it will give them a pulse. And what's happened in this case, it's a, the GPS is a little bit off, but she's then run back to where the rest of the cows are. And then she's tried it several other places along the way. And then here at the top of the field, she has done it again. So she's had an audible warning and then she's had a shock and then she's moved back. So that's in that period of time, she's had what, 10, 11 audible warnings and a couple of shocks. And that was over a three day period where she's first learned it. What I then did was using the, the app was then I could open up that, that area. And then you can see now she's not had any warnings at all. She's just grazing quite happily within that larger area. What we've done is that we've then moved them round to another paddock. So from this paddock here, we've then moved them around the road and we've moved them into this other paddock. So she's then been grazing in this area from October for a few days later on. We've then moved them again, but one of the issues we have with the system is actually our phone signal. So the collar itself and the boundary works off GPS, but the collar needs a phone signal to actually update the, the changes to a pasture. So at this point, we've moved them out of this pasture. The system hasn't actually quite caught up with itself, and she's ended up with a few uh, warnings and shocks as she's moved. And what we've done is we've moved them into um, this field here. So this field is one of our um, key chuff fields. So all of this area here is, um, is a nice south-facing, kind of quite grassy field that we we like to graze through most of the year as much as possible so we're using that um to to graze for the chuff 
so that there's a short sward of grass so that there's access um, into the ground for the invertebrates that the chuff feed on, but also that there's dung in that field. So there's invertebrates that are living in the dung, dung beetles, dung beetle larvae is what the chuff are feeding on at certain times of the year. So again, once she's been moved into that paddock and once the system's caught up with itself, she's quite happily grazed that area before we've moved her on. We've then moved her on to the big hill. So the big hill is an area from this point all the way up here and around. So it's a, it's a very large area of the reserve. But what we wanted to do was focus a lot of our grazing in these bays around this cliff area here. So what we've done is located them in this paddock here. So this was one of the first paddocks we created on the system to graze, um, particularly these green, green bays here. Um, and a little bit of the hill just to give them a little bit of scope. Rather than putting a fence across the top of the cliff here, which would have been very impractical, very expensive. The cost of the collars is about a quarter of the cost of the fence that first period. And um, we were able to graze all of this the summer. So that's particularly using the collars for the grazing for the wildlife aspect of it. What I've then done is I now used the collars going into the winter further. So this is the period November. I've then moved them onto a much larger area of hill here. So this isn't really for the conservation grazing as such, but this is allowing us to maximise our winter feed by grazing the hill quite extensively. So that's an area of about 250 hectares with an exclusion zone in the middle. Uh, for an area that we wanted to protect and to graze less where we've planted some some willows. Um, so through the period of the winter, we were able to graze the cattle on this area um, without a lot of feeding to then, you know, make sure we have plenty of rations for through the spring when they're calving. And if I select another animal. So this animal, this has given her the whole period or over a year of different areas that she's been in then I can select the pasture from that as to where she's been. So this was one of the areas we graze um, along a road. So this main road cuts right through the middle of this paddock um, and leads to these houses here. But this area is actually a great area that we need to graze through the summer. Uh, sorry, the late um, late autumn. Um, we have a, a very strong um, uh, marsh artillery population here. So marsh artillery butterflies are quite a rare um, commodity in Scotland. We have a, a good area here for them. It's a good habitat, but we like to graze it. But without the collars, we had to shut a gate on the road here and also the cattle. It meant the cattle could get right to near the houses. So purely for a, um, you know, a practical reason for, um, you know, being kind to the neighbours as such, we've used the no fence collars in this area so people can drive through here without any problem. And then the collars are actually what's stopping them going further up and down the road. And then they're still grazing, again, key areas that need to be grazed down so it's not too rank through the winter. Um, yeah, and that's um, um, a lot of what we're doing with the cattle. And then we're just using those to basically to to you know lengthen the the period of the winter where we're not having to feed but then also focusing grazing for for the for the key habitats and the key um you know bird species that we're looking after here